In this video, I will be discussing TERF-M, which stands for Total Internal Reflection Fluorescence Microscopy. Let's look at a cell in a traditional microscope. The cell sits on a glass surface in an aqueous environment, and the fluorescent molecules within the cell are excited by laser irradiation that passes through the entire sample. The detector collects the resulting fluorescent signal, from which you can eventually generate a cell image. Now, what happens if you aren't interested in the entire cell? What if you're only interested in the cell's interaction with the glass surface? Is the whole cell body stuck to the glass, or just a certain part of it? This traditional setup is not going to help you answer this question, because the whole volume of your cell is being excited and producing the fluorescent signal. This is where our friend E.J. Ambrose comes in, who, in 1956, found a way to study the cell-glass interface by controlling the excitation scheme so that only cell parts very close to the glass interface would be excited. He used total internal reflection. Total internal reflection occurs when light is totally reflected off a surface. The Snell's law equation describes the bending of light where there is a change in refractive index passing from one material to another. The variables n1 and n2 are the refractive indices of the respective media, and theta1 and theta2 represent the light's angle of incidence and angle of refraction. If a beam of light passes through glass and then through water, which has a lower refractive index, it will bend to a larger angle from normal. This is easily calculated using the equation. As we increase the incident angle, we will eventually reach a point where the resulting angle of refraction is 90 degrees. We call this the critical angle because once you exceed this angle, you can achieve total internal reflection and the light will not enter the second medium. If the light is totally reflected, then how do the fluorophores near the interface get excited on the other side? Well, it turns out that an evanescent wave is generated at the point of total internal reflection. This energy source decays exponentially from the interface and travels about 100 nanometers up into the second medium, which contains your sample. The evanescent wave excites fluorophores near the interface and ignores anything else, whether it be fluorophores in the cell or fluorophores freely diffusing in the solution above. TERF-M works for samples that fluoresce and are close to an interface. There are several different geometries that can be used for this technique, and I will be discussing the two most common, prism-based and objective-based. Prism-based turf was the first type of geometry used for studying interfaces. This is traditionally built with a non-inverted setup, meaning that the objective lens that collects the signal is located above the specimen, which exists in an aqueous solution sitting on top of a glass surface. The excitation beam passes through a prism situated with the sample to hit the glass water interface past the critical angle and create the evanescent wave. Note that the excitation and emission parts of the microscope are situated on opposite sides of the sample. This allows the objective to collect only the fluorescent signal. Unlike P-TERF, objective-based TERF has an excitation and emission parts of the microscope situated on the same side of the sample. In fact, they share the same objective lens, which sits below the sample in an inverted configuration. Excitation light enters the objective lens off-center so that it can be sent at an angle to hit the glass water interface. Because the critical angle of glass and water must be exceeded, O-TERF only works if the lens has a high numerical aperture of at least 1.34. The evanescent wave is generated and the fluorescent signal travels down the objective with the reflected laser light. The excitation and emission sources are separated by a dichroic mirror allowing only the fluorescent signal to reach the detector. Both P-TERF and O-TERF can be used for nanoscale and single molecule imaging. Let's discuss the pros and cons of TERF-M geometries, specifically with regards to stray light artifacts, sample and technique flexibility, and cost. To get really nice nanoscale images, one wants to minimize any stray or scattered light that might cause artifacts in detection. In this category, P-TERF is the preferred geometry. In P-TERF, stray light can come from scattering at the glass water interface or at the prism. Because the collection objective is rather far away from these sources, rarely are extra measures necessary to minimize stray light. O-TERF, on the other hand, is more prone to stray light. The figure here identifies several sources in the O-TERF setup that can contribute to significant stray light interference. 
This can be minimized by optimizing the optics, particularly the objective lens and the dichroic mirror. Additional filters can also help remove the excitation wavelength and scattering. However, P-TURF is often described to have a clean turf and better signal-to-noise ratio in comparison to O-TURF because of its natural lower stray light interference. When it comes to sample flexibility, O-TURF has the advantage. The O-TURF setup is naturally inverted, meaning that the objective can connect nicely with the bottom of the slide through oil immersion. This makes collecting near-field signals straightforward. P-TURF, on the other hand, has the evanescent wave generating on the opposite side of the sample, away from the objective. This means that the fluorescent signal needs to pass through the bulk of the sample to reach the objective. Alternatively, if you want to put the objective below the system, the prism is in the way. This is going to limit near-field collection. The whole P-TURF setup can be inverted, but when this is done, some limitations to sample preparation ensue because the sample holder is now upside down. Another tech fun thing about O-TURF is that it is friendly with other analysis techniques. Because O-TURF geometry is confined in the objective lens itself, resulting in free space on the stage, O-TURF can be combined with other nanoscale imaging techniques. It has been shown to be used with fluorescence resonance energy transfer and atomic force microscopy. P-TURF does not work well with these other techniques because the geometry is bulky. When it comes to money, P-TURF is by far the financially friendly option. To get a high numerical aperture objective lens capable of pulling off turf, you must be willing to spend a couple thousand dollars on the objective alone. P-TURF does not require such expensive lens because the critical angle is achieved with a prism. Interestingly enough, P-TURF microscopes were commercially unavailable and had to be self-constructed in research labs until quite recently. Many argue that the commercialized microscope companies aiming to make money preferred to offer O-TURF setups because they would require the purchase of the pricier objective lenses.